Hello and welcome to The Eileen Silverman Show. I'm your host, Eileen, and on this week's program, our guests discuss the upcoming preview party and performance, Invasion of Privacy, based on the Gainesville trial between Marjorie Kanan Rawlings and Zelma Kaysen. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us for our program. In 1946, Gainesville was mesmerized by the courtroom drama between Marjorie Kanan Rawlings and Zelma Kaysen. Now the subject of a play, The Invasion of Privacy. To tell us more, I'm pleased to introduce my guest, Florence Turcott, curator of the Marjorie Kanan Rawlings papers University of Florida Libraries. And Florence, it is great to have you here. Thank you, I'm happy to be here. Well, this is, first of all, some great opportunities ahead for all of Gainesville with a wonderful partnership between the UF Libraries and Santa Fe College and the Friends of Marjorie Kanan Rawlings Farm, all so that we can learn more about this fascinating woman and this, this lawsuit that took place right here in our community. So, you have all the facts about Marjorie. So give us some of the backstory to help us understand. Well, American author Marjorie Canan Rawlings moved here to Florida in 1928. Um, immediately she became uh, enamored and fascinated by the flora and fauna of this uh, region, and she began writing um, for Scribner's um, t uh, stories about the people around her. Um, which, which I know she loved. She loved she Cross did, Creek where she, she settled. Them. She loved, what it, she loved the, the nature of it, the mm -hmm. people, everything. That, that comes through. Her first two novels, um, South Moon Under and The Yearling, were both set in the Ocala National Forest, not far from where she made her home in Cross Creek. Speaking of Cross Creek, in 1942 she wrote a book called Cross oh, Creek okay. that she referred to as a love story about the people that, the, in her community, in the village, and, uh, and, and her neighbors in the, um, right. in the area that... Um, now, this is, now that was after she wrote The Yearling. That's correct, right, For which yes. she got the Pulitzer Prize, in mm -hmm. which we all kind of think Marjorie Kanan Rawlings, the yearling. That's right. So this is another way that we should be knowing her through well, Cross Creek. Well, her, her, um, her editor, Maxwell Perkins mm -hmm. at Scribner's, um, exhorted her to write more about the people that were surrounding her. Um, she did love them very much, and it became this book, Cross Creek. Right. And, um, Unfortunately, um, Zelma <laughs> Kaysen right, didn't think she did uh, betrayed her so accurately. The, she wasn't exactly. well happy with she those took, adjectives. She took umbrage with this particular text right, um, that, in and, the book. And share that with us, please. Sure. Well. Um, Zelma is an ageless spinster resembling an angry and efficient canary. I cannot decide whether she should have been a man or a mother. She combines the more violent characteristics of both and those, for, those who ask for or accept her manifold ministrations 
think nothing of being cursed loudly at the very instant of being tenderly fed, clothed, nursed, or guided through their troubles. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, according to Marjorie, this, she, she loves Elma. They were great friends, and, and they were taking the census together, and this was kind of how she saw Zelma and didn't think that this was negative, but apparently Zelma thought otherwise. Zelma reacted very negatively to this. She, she told Marjorie, you have made a hussy out of me, and she soon afterwards filed suit against Marjorie initially for libel right. and then um, afterwards for invasion of privacy at the advice of her legal team. Right. So, um, and it was never before had a person a been named, it, that was named in an autobiographical work, claimed an, this invasion of privacy in a suit against someone else. So right, which, which sort of was against Marjorie's viewpoint and other authors that it was a constitutional freedom of speech right, what you put in the book. And so this was a real landmark case. And certainly, uh, you know, set Gainesville um, on its ear, as you would have said, that it was, it was everything everyone was talking about. And we Indeed. just have a few more moments. Yeah. But of course, the play, The Right of Privacy, is based on another novel. Uh, it's this book, it's a, it's a um, nonfiction work called Invasion of Privacy, The Cross Creek Trial of Marjorie Canan R Rawlings, written in 1988 by Patricia Nassif Acton. Yes, the play that is going to be shown, is, that we'll talk about later, is um, based on this on this, on this book. book right right well it's fascinating and we have so much more to learn about these two women but but thank you for all your knowledge sure. stay with us we'll be right back We're back talking about the production, The Invasion of Privacy, and I'm pleased to introduce Alora Haynes, Chair, Santa Fe College, Art, Dance, Music, Theater, Fine Arts Hall. And Alora, it's wonderful to have you here, and, and you, there's, there's so much that you're in charge of there at the, at the Fine Arts Hall, wonderful very things. Very fortunate, very honored oh, to be a part of it. The community is, is fortunate to have you and all the wonderful opportunities Thank taking you. place Thank at you. Santa Fe College. And this production, Invasion of Privacy, is just another wonderful way that the community can learn and grow, and, and the students, obviously, too. So kind of as one of the, the partners in this, um, tell us how this came about. Sure, for Santa Fe. sure. The genesis of Invasion of Privacy came from the Master Artist Series at Santa Fe at the Fine Arts Hall. And a year ago, when we had the Master Artist Series, I invited Judith Chapman to come as a, and she did a one woman show uh, called Vivian, based on the story of Vivian Lee. And while she was here, she said, I feel so fortunate to be here in Gainesville where I can do some research on a play that I'm about to direct, Invasion of Privacy, written by the playwright Larry Parr. And she took a trip down to Cross Creek and she was spending time in our library researching all of this history of Marjorie Canan Rawlings and, uh, and the trial. Uh, and the more she spoke of it, the more I said, you know, I, I can't not invite you to come right. back here and do this because 
I don't believe this has ever been done in Alachua County, and it no. hasn't. And I believe that it, it hasn't for lots of reasons. And I think one of the things that we want to do with this play is have everybody understand, first of all, who she was, what she exactly. meant to, to this area, and just how we've all evolved from this time. And from uh, this first lawsuit of this nature. Absolutely. I mean, you know, the social justice of it. Yes. The women's rights of it. Uh, going back the to, to the early it. 40s and thinking how different things were for women. Absolutely. I mean, the students probably have, you know, not that much of an idea. No. And that was one of the reasons, another reason why I was curious to, to, to look into the aspect of having it. I asked some of the students, and, you know, just took a poll. How many of you know her? And, no one knew her. I mean, I, I, I can remember a time when her, her work was uh, required exactly. to read in school, but I don't know that it's... I don't May know not be anymore, and, and things change. Things and change, and, and all of us who are working on this project are doing what we can to preserve her pre and preserve her literary genius. And, uh, and just to also talk about all, this, all the many, many subjects around the play, around her history, around the, the case. And that it's part of our local history it also, is. making it important. And before we, before we delve a little bit further sure. in, go back to when uh, the performance will take place. It's going to be June the 18th through the 20th. Okay. On opening night, there's a special thing that I would love for the students to understand. It's from 6 to 7 before the play. The, every night, uh, the, it starts at 7.30. But on our opening night from 6 to 7, we're having a forum to discuss the court case, you know, some yes, of the excellent. what exactly was going on, uh, you know, in, in the accusation there. And, and a lot about how we've evolved since then, a little bit what we were talking about there, the women's issues of it, the fact that there was a female lawyer and she was the first, the first to cross-examine. All of those pieces of history that are just so fascinating for all of us to own. And I think that's also going to help the students really be engaged and understand what's happening with the play so that they're not just going. Um, and the, the very, my favorite piece of this is we're letting all the students, up to 200 of them, come for free. On oh, night. that is phenomenal! Right. Um, on the other nights, of course, no. there is a nine dollar fee for seniors mm -hmm. and children, twelve and under. Twelve for the orchestra. Excuse me, for the balcony, and fifteen for the orchestra, okay. which is still, still very oh, affordable. Oh, very affordable. Yes, I congratulate you. Yeah, we really want and the show to be accessible to the yes, community. Yes, yes, and you, um, of course, we're we're very proud that. Um, one of the actresses or well-known actors from the Hippodrome, Sarah Morsi, is betraying Zelma Kaysen. And then you're bringing in other people that are part of Absolutely. this. And Judith Chapman directing will be here. I mean, it's Well, Judith phenomenal. had some luck with this play out in California. They won several awards for Best Play, Best Direction, and sev several of the actors won. But I really, I love Sarah Morsi. I know her very well. Um, and I know that she actually was, I remember that she had done a one-woman show exactly. as Marjorie uh, in the past. So I know she's familiar with all with of this. this whole and so I reached history. out to her and called and said, would you like to be a part of this project? And she graciously accepted, and I'm, I feel very honored about that. So. Oh, indeed. I mean, I am very, I'm looking forward to it. Me too. I will be there, and I know yeah. that it will be well received. Great. We thank you, Elora. Thank you, Eileen. <laughs> Stay with us. We'll be right back. We're talking about the invasion of privacy with actor Sarah 
Morsi, member of the Hippodrome Company. And it's always wonderful to see you on stage at the Hippodrome, Sarah. Thank you. And everywhere else, and I'm, I'm so pleased that Alora spoke about The Enchanted Land, the production. Right. The one woman show about Marjorie. Right. And now, in the Invasion of Privacy, you're taking on another role. Exactly. You're on the other side, you're Zelma Kaysen. <laughs> yes, I'll be playing Zelma. So, um, that, so that's a whole other sort of a flip side there. It is a totally a flip side, but I think it's a, it's a really, uh, I think I'm well suited for that at this point. And uh, I'm excited about it. Zelma's quite a character. Oh, I can see. Uh, so although Mar through Marge the book is a character <laughs> too, but, yeah. but you know, in this particular story, Zelma is quite a character. Well, and I love it. Feisty, controversial. Absolutely. Yes. Flo was giving us a taste of what led to that lawsuit. Absolutely. And so kind of help us see how, how you're preparing for this role and, and the fact that some of the other artists are not here in Gainesville. So right. how is this coming together? Well, we've, uh, we've kind of spoken through emails, you mm -hmm. know, which is kind of unusual. I mean, that we're used to as, as actors coming together and putting on a play with people we haven't seen before. Okay, you know. right. We do have a pretty short rehearsal period for this one. That's what I wonder. So <laughs> um, Matthew Lindsay, who's also a Hipp Hippodrome Company member, and Norton Baskin, who was Marjorie's husband, right. second husband, right? Uh, at the time of the trial. Uh, he was on trial as well because a, a single woman couldn't be on trial. Right, another fact that is yes. very interesting to this whole case. So, yes. And that the lawyer representing Zelma was a woman. Was a I woman. Think the, yes. Uh, very unusual, and women couldn't even be on the jury. And oh, here she had right. a, a, you know, a woman attorney. So there are a lot of really interesting First. and important things uh, going on. Yes. with this. Yes. Yeah. And and that I try to think about, you know, Gainesville and the residents and and how people were were so caught up in this trial because, you know, we we know all the names. Yes. The, uh, Judge Murphy, we know uh Sixby Scruggs who they describe as a, you know, cracker uh, attorney that yes. being a term of endearment. And he is but he's well also known. in Cross Creek. Yes. Yeah, I mean, so these are is. all people that's that are part of Gainesville's history yes. and held in high regard. Parker Carmichael. So yeah. uh, people attending this performance are going to see a lot of, of names they can connect with. I think so, yeah. I think you still see those same names you around do. Gainesville. You they're, do. They're all part yeah. of our history. So how, do, how is that in your betrayal and, and how do you, you get into this? Well, you know, it's really interesting to me because I guess um, Larry Parr wrote this play, I guess, you know, the things he has the people saying come from his imagination. I mean, the situations come from the real situation, but right. he really portrays um, Zelma as a, um, a real country sort of character from out in C Cross Creek. And it's mm -hmm. interesting because Marjorie was always said to, um, one of her strengths in writing her characters when she wrote about the people of the creek, um, not on, not in this book so much as the others was that that she really captured the dialect of the people, and so I think it's interesting that Zelma really speaks that way. She's a real she's a real cracker, and um, of course Marjorie wasn't. She was a very well educated right, she came from the north and, woman. Yes. yes, winner of a Pulitzer Prize. And, uh, but they were, they were good friends. But the way that, that Zelma's written is, um, it's quite comical. She's not particularly a, a woman with a good sense of humor, but she's just a comical character. Right. And I think a really very good hearted person, as Marjorie is as you know. But obviously well. it offended her. That's what set up this whole libel. And then it became, uh, for the first time ever, invasion of privacy. And yes. And when you look at from our point of view now, where, you know, there's hardly any privacy for people these days, especially. Right. <laughs> That's really it true. All it's a big issue right now. It is a big issue it right really now, is. all the way around again. You know, yes. and and I know in your your pr preparation, you have mm -hmm. visited the cemetery where both women are. Buried. I have. Yes, they're buried just like forty or fifty feet away from each right. other. Right, and there's a story about that. Yeah, Can you share it. Yeah. I think. Well, I, actually, I think Marjorie was supposed to be buried in um, another cemetery but on the day of her funeral I think that uh, Norton had said Island Grove and they took her to Antioch Cemetery 
and they like just buried her there because I think there was some miscommunication and he didn't want to make a big deal right, so about it. it. Yeah. And then now, 10 years later when Zelma died, she was buried like 30 feet away from so Marge. So after all this time, the uh, two after women After all this time, they are laying side by side and uh, accomplishing something they could not accomplish in life, peaceful coexistence. That's the, <laughs> that's the story, the peaceful coexistence. Well but said, I think they Sarah. actually got along well in, in Despite life. Despite all of this, yes. Yeah, it's, a, it's an odd thing, the way it got started. Nobody really knows exactly, How I think, why Zelma was triggered to do this. brought that suit. I think she feels like other people who were mentioned in the book were maybe getting some kind of payment from Marjorie I or see. something. I see, so there was something. She odd. felt like she was owed something that she wasn't getting. She wasn't I don't getting. think maybe we'll ever know the entire story about that. But when we're sitting in the audience at the Fine Arts Hall at Santa mm -hmm. Fe, we're going to look forward to your betrayal of Zelma Casey. Thank you. Thank and you. I A thank salty you. character. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> thank you. Thanks for the insight. Thank you. <laughs> Stay with us. We'll be right back. We're talking about invasion of privacy, and I'm pleased to introduce Elaine Spencer, President, Friends of Marjorie Canan Rawlings Farm. And Elaine, it's good to have you join us also. Thank you. And I congratulate uh, the Friends Group for being another part of this partnership in making all of this happen and helping us understand Marjorie. And, and tell me about the Friends Group. What, do you, what are your goals? Yeah, our main goal is to preserve Marjorie Kenan Rollins farm oh, and great. to preserve the farm and to, so visitors and people from all over literally all over the world wow. come to Cross, to Creek. Cross Creek and our main focus is to preserve and our basic funding is from state appropriations okay. however there's all these extra things that they <laughs> that you need that they need that we help with and we're really called this CSO and at Which first I yes. had no idea what does <laughs> CSO mean and CSO means citizens support organization Perfect. and our of course our organization our nonprofit group is friends of the Marjorie Kenner Rollins farm oh. so f such as we do uh, uh, I, I they, see in the newsletter yes, yeah, you do great we do things. newsletters uh, we also help yeah. with a mower they need to mow the lawn right. and the All acres the upkeep. that up, upkeep they need irrigation baby chicks born. we <laughs> just got new baby chicks tw uh, two dozen of them <laughs> baby chicks because Marjorie had chicks and right. she had so a lot of different animals. You're preserving mm -hmm. her part of history, exactly. really. Mm -hmm. and, and you have something very special coming <gasps> up, too. Yes. And so tell us about the preview party, June 12th. 
this is our time to shine. Oh, good. I love it. I do, too. It's, it's our benefit and uh, fundraiser, as you want to say. Sure. And we have not really had one in a while. And so this just came about uh, with the help of Santa Fe College. That is great. And we just jumped on it and said, yes, we'd like to participate. We'd love to. And we and wanted to have our own. Yes, and your it, own it, time. And, our and own we, time to and shine. And now where is it going to take place? Thank you. At the Matheson Museum. Perfect. June 12th on a right. Friday evening, okay. a week before the performance. Okay. So see, this is great. So it what leads in. It leads into, so it's the Matheson Museum, six to eight okay. at night on June 12th. And, and we were so delighted to find out that the director, Judith Chapman, That's is so coming. Good. And then we're even more excited <laughs> that the cast members are gonna be there. So oh, this is wonderful. And then many Gainesvillians who remembered. Yes. This trial, this and, trial and the people involved are going to be there, right. and of and course you've your it, it, and the Matheson yeah. is perfect because they already have the, a wonderful display that they're mm -hmm. presenting mm -hmm. for us to understand, mm -hmm. Marjorie. Mm -hmm. So that's ongoing right now. Yes, I went by there this afternoon. Yes, and it looks great. It really looks wonderful. So when you walk in the Matheson, the night of the preview party, you will be back in time, oh. and and then with all the characters there who are going to be cast members. You'll be immersed yes, in it's her going life. to be, and yes. then we'll be all hyped up, ready to go, <laughs> see yes. the performance, and the friends will be there at the performance in the lobby, and we'll oh, be good. there to uh, promote the friends, Tell sell us books, how to join, and, how and to join a membership, yes. and um, and now tickets for the preview party. Oh, um, Thirty-five dollars okay. a piece. Right. Thirty-five dollars a piece, and, and you've got great catering. Yes. Uh, yes. Um, elegant events is going to be catering. Right. And the uh, Matheson has so generously is helping us and partnering with us on this. I'm so pleased, Elaine. It is going to be marvelous. I'm looking forward to the preview and, of course, to the performance. And I thank you uh, as president of the Friends organization and, and all of those involved in the Friends group for all they're doing to make this possible. You're welcome. Thank you. And I want to thank all of my guests. And I hope that you will attend the benefit performance and on June 12th and that I'll see you at the performance at the Fine Arts Hall at Santa Fe College. I'm glad you tuned in and I hope you'll join us next week. Take care.